Hey, welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Wisdom Moon, and your friend in the Christian music industry. And today, I am really excited to have Sherry Keggy join us today. Uh, and I would say it's a really special treat for me, and I'll get into why. So welcome, Sherry. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, and the reason um, it's a special treat for me is because I actually listened to your music uh, back in the day. <laughs> And maybe you could talk a little bit about that, but uh, you're one of my favorite artists and your oh, songs really, you know, the lyrics and just how uplifting your messages were, you know, that really impacted me. And I would uh, back in the day, you know, save up all the money I could to go buy like the new cassette tape and stuff. So, cool. Yeah. So tell us about like your journey uh, starting out as a Christian artist. Yes. Well, thanks for sharing that, though, Wisdom. That touches me. Um, well, I was born and raised in Southern California and uh, eventually was uh, on staff as a part-time worship coordinator, was my title, um, mm. at a small church out there that we were a part of, and uh, Crossroads Evangelical Free Church. And there is where I began to write my first songs, many mm. of which were corporate worship songs that we would sing as a church family. And not knowing where that would lead, it was a time of discovery. Uh, while I had had years of classical piano lessons and played in the talent shows at school and offertories at church, things like that, uh, this was a new thing to... Uh, discover that I could express my love for the Lord and what he was teaching me through songwriting. And people mm. were connecting with it. Uh, I wouldn't always, in the beginning, I wouldn't always announce, okay, this is a new song that I wrote. I would just yeah. in incorporate it into the Sunday morning worship set uh, as if we, you know, hey, we're like any other song, we're learning a new yeah. song. And it was really uh, so rewarding to then have people say, you know, uh, you said just what I wanted to say to the Lord, mm. or, you know, just, I have felt that towards the Lord. And, yeah. uh, really it was sweet, uh, to be in the planning stages. I would find out what the pastor's sermon would be about, what the scripture text was, or if there was a mm. theme and I would then go about planning the music portion. And inevitably I would end up writing songs to go with it. Um, a great example is my very first worship song, uh, song from Psalm 91, You, O Lord, Are My Refuge, which then was recorded on my oh, first yeah. album. You remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that was just taken right from scripture and yeah. it just rolled out really easily. And so it was like, wow, Lord, you know, I don't have a degree in music. Uh, I, I don't understand. I feel all manner of inadequate. And yet these songs were just flowing out fairly easily. Mm. And uh, so I had no other explanation than to say, this is something God has put in me. And um, now I guess it's my job to steward it, you know? <laughs> mm. Yeah. So how did you, quote unquote, get discovered? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, our church had been, uh, had started a lunch program for the homeless. We were kind of in this downtown mm. area where there were some homeless in the community and uh, a lady in our church wanted to start like a lunch program. So we, um, my then husband at the time, uh, we recorded like the first nine songs I had written that, mm. you know, we were singing and um, used friends and people in the church. And uh, we made a little cassette tape, yeah. <laughs> essentially homegrown. I then wrote a 10th song, which so then we put it on. So we'd have 10 songs. The ladies, we hand covered. We printed out these little jackets and hand um, <laughs> colored in with colored pencils, these little pink flowers oh, wow. with green stems. And it was like <laughs> Sherry Keggy inside my heart or something. Oh, wow. And then anyway, but then we sold those cassette tapes on Sunday morning. And then we took that money and poured it into the lunch program. Oh, wow. So they had uh, grocery money and all of that. So it was mm. a sweet beginning. But then yeah. that later served as my demo, if you will. Uh. Um, my then husband at the time was working as a sound engineer with um, Maranatha Music and Vineyard, oh. um, these uh, mixing sound at the Harvest Crusades, Greg Laurie mm. out there at the Angels Stadium. And um, so some of those relationships, then he, he sent it to uh, 
Billy Batstone and uh, Tommy Coombs and um, our connection at Vineyard. Can't think of who that was. And uh, inevitably then, so they were wanting to record the songs because mm. there, there were all these worship songs. And uh, in the meantime, we sent it to Peter York at Sparrow Records. Oh. And uh, Peter used to travel his rhythm guitar for Phil Kagey. Oh. And so that's how we, and, and then he became one of the execs up at Sparrow. And so mm. we sent it to him. And in the meantime, my then husband was mixing sound for a Charlie Peacock concert at oh, Biola okay. University. And uh, I would often go along and hang out and uh, mm. roll cables over under <laughs> or whatever. And uh, so he was doing sound check with Charlie and, um, and then Charlie left to go get ready for that evening's event. And, uh, there was a friend of ours there on campus and, um, we were talking about my music, how I was writing and such. And he's like, Oh really? I didn't know that. And he's like, why don't you go up and, um, play me a song? You know, there was the piano set the stage. The audience had not been allowed in yet. And so I went up and said and played, I want to say it was child of the father, uh, and, as the story goes, Charlie heard the music, came back in the auditorium and was standing back at the soundboard there mm. and um, asking about me, who's that, you know? <laughs> and um, then when the song was over, I looked up and then I was sort of nervous because now I saw that Charlie was back in the room and he said, play me another one. <laughs> so I played Little Boy on His Knees. Uh, which was a song that was on that first album that I'd written for my son. And so that night, Charlie sat with us and uh, we had dinner with him. And uh, he said, boy, you know, I'd love to put the good word in for you, you know, back mm. in Nashville. He at the time was producing a lot of Sparrow artists that oh, okay. I loved listening to um, out of the gray, Margaret Becker and such. Oh, yeah. And um these were just really great artists. And so it was just a sweet thing then. So Charlie did, the, as the story goes, Charlie called Peter from California, I think. He said, mm -hmm. Peter, I've got two words for you. And um, he said, Sherry Kagey. <laughs> so, <laughs> so by then, Peter had had our received our little cassette. Yeah. And, um, and so... That was just, I guess, maybe confirmation to Peter mm. that Charlie had seen me and said, you know, oh, she's one of us, you know. Yeah. So imagine wow. as a young aspiring artist um, that I would have these people affirming my giftings and saying, no, you have a place here among us, you know, <laughs> a yeah. place at the table. So mm. that was really sweet. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and just how, you know, those relationships just kind of open the doors and uh, I love that your first cassette tape was like literally color pencil. <laughs> I wish I had one right here. I could show you. Yeah. It was really a sort of a joint, a joint effort. And then neat as it, then it grew beyond my, that local church where mm. I was serving because people were saying, Oh, I sent this to my missionary friend in Japan oh, or wow. I sent this. So I started getting reports of this music going outside the, those church walls. Wow. And that was really incredible and humbling and wow. And then, uh, we flew to Nashville and met with everybody. And, um, I remember we were sitting around this big conference table at Sparrow and, um, uh, they started talking timetables and stuff mm. like, uh, you know, well, you know, as far as their releases, upcoming releases and where I might fit in, but they still mm. hadn't said with clarity, okay, we're going to sign you as an artist. Yeah. You're going to record your songs. You're going to be the one clinging, singing your mm. songs, etc. You're going to work with Charlie Peacock. They, yeah. they hadn't clearly stated that so here i am this young green thing and i'm in this room and so they start talking about timetable and i said i kind of interrupted i sort of said so wait a minute are you telling me that we're going to make a record you know <laughs> i was trying to you know find out you know and then they said you don't get it do you i guess i was a little you know naive <laughs> and so very much naive and have um you know just grown you know since then but mm. that's a little bit of the history so imagine <laughs> wow. yeah so i was probably you know i was early 20s thereabouts early to mid 20s by time i signed with sparrow mm. back and yeah. that first album came out in 94. 
Wow. So were your first projects like on, or especially maybe the homemade one that you you did, was it on like a four track, like eight track, those kind of things or? Oh, no, no. Um, well, right. <laughs> they, they got the cassette, but then we made full fledged compact discs. Um, okay. But it but was what, also... did, what did you use to record it? Oh, oh, okay. So that would be a Charlie question. Um, we, came, <laughs> we came to Nashville and recorded in his studio, the Art House, as it's oh, known. Okay. So in was it Bellevue. digital? Do you remember? Like, well, was it a digital? I thought it was reels, but you know. Okay. I, yeah. I can't remember. That's what I would um, imagine <laughs> at that. Yeah, at a techie time. question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're yeah, like, but, I, I was just there to sing. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't remember. I should know that. That's a really good question. <laughs> but did my first four recordings on Sparrow Records, yeah. Wow. So during that time, I would imagine you were touring quite a bit. Like, what was that like? Um, well, we uh, by then had two small children. So we were taking the kids on the road. Mm. I toured mm. in the early days with Phillips, Craig and Dean. Oh yeah. And um, also Point of Grace. Mm. Uh, but I remember that the, my big question as a young mother was, you know, here, here God was opening the door for my music, but my first ministry was at home, you know, to my mm. husband and children. And I remember the big question was, do we potty train Sarah before the tour or after? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, because they were two and four when we did that first tour. And I remember, um, I'll never forget Cameron, my son turned five while we mm. were on the road. And we did a little surprise birthday party for him backstage, uh, had a little cake and, and Phillips, Craig and Dean sang happy birthday to Cameron <laughs> and somewhere it's on video and he was all shy and bashful about <laughs> it, but it was a, a sweet memory. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so for, you know, maybe like newer artists that are pretty fresh, you know, and green to the Christian music industry. And I know a lot has changed since uh, when you were like on the road and with Sparrow. Um, but looking back, what would you what would you say like you wish people would have like told you back then? Or what would you tell somebody, you know, now uh, that's up and coming as far as like um, encouragement or some guidance uh, from your experience? Wow. Um, well, <laughs> you are pulled at from a lot of um, different places. You know, there's the writing and the recording and the touring and the, if you're, you know, if you have a family, you're trying to balance all of these things, uh, your home life and your work life. And at that time, I mean, I have um, plastic bins of fan letters, you know, fan mm. mail, actually letters, you know, that were hand yeah. come. So you're trying to like even respond to those if you can, it's just impossible to do it yeah. all. Um, and so, man, it just becomes so important to um, really nurture and savor and cherish and protect your relationship with the Lord mm. as your source of where all these things are flowing out from. Like yeah. you have to tend to your heart um, and, and, and keep that close or you have nothing to pour out to others. Mm. And, uh, you know, I've experienced times of burnout in my, in yeah. my life, you know, wearing all the different hats and, um, God had to teach me the hard way about the Sabbath. Um, mm. how, you know, many artists are touring on the weekends, um, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever you're, you're yeah. singing in someone else's church on Sunday, perhaps as I was a lot. And, um, and so you've got to find that day of rest where you can honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. And it's not just an act of worship, really. Um, the Sabbath means to stop, to pause, to rest. Yeah. And so it's God's care for us, uh, that we can, uh, you know, stop a minute because we're not mach machines and we can reconnect with him and we can refuel and then go back out and continue to do the things he's calling us to do. Yeah. 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 That's really good. And, you know, that is so important, I think, especially when you think about longevity mm -hmm. of a music ministry, because uh, you can only go so long without resting and yeah. without like you being filled up. Because, you know, at some point you're going to be empty and you're not going to have anything to give. So 
Right. Yeah, I think that's really sage yeah. advice. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've gone through a lot of you know different seasons in your life, mm -hmm. and you've gone through some hardships. And uh, I would love for you to share some of that, whatever you're you know comfortable talking about, sure. uh, whether it's like your marriage or uh, yeah. What would yeah. you like to share about that? Sure. Um, well, as as it is with many artists or creatives, often it is through the heavier, weightier, harder, more difficult things in life that that creativity flows from, you know. Yeah. And so it's true for me. Um, and uh, in I, I was married for 22 years to my high school sweetheart, and mm. uh, and and my then husband was. Um, uh, you know, one of the ones that early on had encouraged me to try writing my own songs and such. Mm. But, um, you know, we, we ended up with an unwanted divorce. Um, and God uh, met me really intimately through that. Uh, in really through years of struggle, I was quietly, um, uh, you know, writing songs stemmed out of the pain that we were experiencing, um, mm. but not in a place to be able to share, you know, but then after the divorce, I wrote, uh, really many, many songs that were recorded on, uh, the album. So I can tell which released in 2012. Mm. And so that was a very healing, I call it my beauty from ashes project. Yeah. Um, because there was the ashes of this marriage and yet God was bringing beauty from it. Like only mm. he can, as I was, pouring out my heart to him through songwriting, then he's now using those songs to minister to others. Um, and then more recently, uh, my, my dad, uh, who I have a, a great relationship with, um, he in September, 2018 made the choice to take his own life. And, you know, this was not something we were prepared for. Um, I never could have imagined that was, you know, would be part of the story. Mm. And, um, and so I praise God that he's a believer and in fact, just appreciate so much that he and I, uh, were always able to talk so honestly about the things of the faith and, mm. um, and, you know, my parents were always taking me around to my gigs, you know, in California and, um, but that rocked my world. It was, I've had yeah. griefs, you know, the, the scripture speaks of griefs of various kinds. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had had other griefs and losses and God met me in those, but this was like something else. It was like, I, there wasn't a scripture verse I could tack on to make mm -hmm. it all better. Um, there wasn't a, a, a light switch where I could just pull myself up out of this fog of grief. God had to, um, sit with me there and he and he so and he did and he allowed me to process as i often do through songwriting so um my newest project is um there are several songs that really stem from that processing my journey um, of grief navigating that uncharted territory and um so it's been my prayer really that god would redeem that grief and um you know, and that's a work that, you know, that's a work, you know, we, we kind of, <clears throat> we hand these things over to the Lord and then we entrust it to him. And then we, and then, and then it's for the Holy spirit to take it from there, you know, to take this beautiful thing and then, um, use it in people's hearts to heal and comfort and transform. So, yeah. mm -hmm. wow. yeah. and so, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people can really relate to your story and just the things that you've shared and it's hard i think especially as an artist to be vulnerable about those things and even talk talk about it on the podcast like mm -hmm. i don't think that most artists would feel comfortable doing that so is that something like you've just like grown to be comfortable with um like how how do you, I guess, like find yourself being able to talk about those things and be able to, you know, encourage others with that? Yeah. Um, well, for a lot of years, I, I couldn't share a lot about mm. my pain and, and, and that was okay. That was just the circumstance that I was in. And I share, I tried to steward it as best I could through my songs and let the songs speak. Um, 
but uh, after after the divorce, it was sort of like, in some ways, a relief to be able to share about it. I know that mm. sounds contrary to what you would think, uh, be, but because God was meeting me in such big ways, it was it, if my life is no longer my own, then it's sort of like I, I was compelled. It, it's like how could I keep God's goodness a secret? How could I keep it to myself? Yeah the way that he met me. And so I began mm -hmm. to share those testimonies. Not, you know, it's not necessary always to go into all this lavish detail, you know, yeah. um, but to share the, the brokenness and how God has met you in it. So, um, it, but still it was a year or so uh, before I shared the piece about dad. You know, I shared that mm -hmm. we lost him unexpectedly. I began posting and certainly writing out of that. But it was a good year or so before there was a release to go, okay, you know, he's totally free in Jesus now. Mm. Um, and uh, my mom was the first one actually that commented on one of my posts that she sort of opened the door, opened the conversation, mm. you know. She said, perhaps it's time we talk about it because I know we're not mm. alone and there are other families who have faced this. Um, you know, I read a book, many, many books, in trying to navigate this um, grief. And in one, it said that every suicide survivor is looking for life to feel normal again after a life event that's so abnormal. Mm. And um, so for me, um, I, I don't know, it's just, uh, I don't know another way to go about it, but to then, but to share a little yeah. bit. You know, because it's mm. so specific. The songs are so, I'm not writing about someone else's life usually, maybe on yeah. occasion, but mostly I'm writing about my own experiences from that place. That's mm. the mojo, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's good. So the album that you just released is called What I Know To Be True. Yeah. And you actually did a crowdfunding campaign for it. So can you walk us through that? Uh, I guess one, uh, is this something that you typically do when you do projects like the crowdfunding aspect mm -hmm. and then uh what have you seen as far as you know just you being able to successfully do that are there any like insights that you can share with other artists yeah um well you know back on the major record label days you know they fund your records the recording costs and such and then you recoup it from your album sales mm -hmm. uh, but uh, i've been an independent artist now for several years and uh as you've said, have crowdfunded. And so that's just a, a tool by which God has provided for me to continue sharing my music through the, you know, committed friends and family, people who are still interested in new songs from me. Mm -hmm. um, they essentially, essentially are prepaying, uh, yeah. you know, pre-ordering, if you will, by their donation, enabling the record to be made. And then they are first to get the recording before it's mm -hmm. even released to the public. Um, so, you know, a, a verse that really always ministered to me in my years where I was single, you know, I'm now remarried and mm -hmm. um, God brought me uh, another husband. And I'm so grateful for that. There's a song on the record about that as well. But in those single years, a verse that ministered to me so much and that I clung to even as an independent artist was that my God will supply all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I just had to like, you know, at sometimes get literally get on the floor on my knees in faith and belief and go, God, this is so much bigger than me. And yet you have called me. You've given these songs. um, you have given me testimonies to share. I'm going to believe that you can do the impossible. And so it was such a, really a step of faith to step out and to see God provide through those tools. And then, you know, yeah. you'll appreciate this. It's pre-marketing, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're, you're sharing all about, you know, the, the GoFundMe or the Kickstarter or whatever is the way you do it. And uh, people are then and hearing tidbits about the record and anticipating its completion and so on. So, um, but yeah. it's, it's wearing the administrative hat, you know, for independent mm. artists. So uh, that part of it's hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I would imagine of setting it yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine overall that it's really rewarding to even just like have that support before, you know, releasing something. 
Uh, and, you know, our team has had the privilege of um, helping with the projects, you know, getting Yay. it out there. And yes. uh, we've been, you know, your marketing team for the project. So what's mm -hmm. been like, I'm curious to, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, if you're watching it on video, you can see the yeah. CD. Yeah. Uh, what would you say has been like the biggest value that we've brought to you as a, a team? Uh, from your perspective? Well, it's sort of twofold. For me, coming out of that season of grief, um, the idea of, of embarking on a new recording and all that that entails was completely overwhelming to me. And so yeah. really, I was knowing that this time around, I needed a kind of emotional support um, it, or, or I couldn't even begin, you know? Mm. <laughs> and so... Uh, just knowing that you guys are there or I could shoot an email and ask a question. But then beyond the emotional support part, that enabled me to, you know, to step forward. But then just lots of logistical things, technical mm -hmm. things that I don't have know how to do or care to do or, you know. <laughs> and so yeah. um, having um, someone, you guys having different people in different areas of expertise, um, mm. with the setup of several things, um, just, I'm just the techie things. I don't know how else to say it. And, um, and ads and, uh, you know, we've seen, you all have sent me these reports. Um, we've, I've seen my Spotify list monthly listenership, like double and mm. all these kind of things, exciting things that are, um, you know, marketing related things. So that's been a, a blessing. So I want to thank you and your team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's been a blast working with you. Our team just adores you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's been uh, just a exciting project to get behind. Mm -hmm. And I think even the messages of the songs, you know, uh, to be able to get it out there to more people and yes. There's a lot of people that need to hear the message. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's been really rewarding for us and uh, to be able to, you know, support you in this endeavor because it can really be lonely for independent artists um, to release something on their own. And mm -hmm. a lot of times it, it does feel vulnerable and you, mm -hmm. know, you just need that, like even just that support <laughs> around you. To go, right. okay, I can do this. <laughs> yes, a sounding board. And the um, I think you all call it the the do it with you approach. Yeah. You know, so yeah. there's still I'm still as an independent artist, you know, very hands on in my hands in a lot of things, but you guys are there as a guide and, and doing a lot some of the, the logistics, but like I hadn't, you know, I'm kind of I'm I'm the grandma demographic and I have um, two <laughs> grandsons and everything. So like I wasn't even on Instagram. Yeah. And um, and so kind of in the beginning, when I started working with you guys, I think it was right around that same time. It was like, OK, I know I need to get a little bit more up with the times uh, and and, uh, you know, take my Facebook and expand that to Instagram. And then just even getting a YouTube channel in sync. I had a mm. channel, but there was some confusion around that. Yeah. And um, just now we're doing YouTube ads with the music video yours to keep. Um, so, uh, a lot of real pluses, things that are, are beyond what I could manage myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, you know, obviously you've been in this thing in Christian music for a long time, longer than most, I would say, you know, that are still putting out music. You know, I think it's one of those industries that it is hard to find artists that have longevity in it um, because, you know, they, for whatever reason, maybe they decide to stop releasing music or maybe it was just first season. Mm -hmm. But obviously, like, God's continuing to give you, you know, songs and you're <laughs> stewarding it well by uh, getting it out there, doing your best to do that. Uh, so do you have any like vision for the future um, or is that something you're just kind of like taking it day by day? Uh, you know, uh, a friend of mine always talks about how um, God gives us our marching orders. And I will say that recording this record, 
Oh, kind of has been my laser fo focus marching order from the Lord, the directive uh, that he was not going to let me off the hook with these songs. Mm. And so that's pretty much all I have known. And I'm just like have been taking step after step in that direction. And voila, mm. now it's released, you know. Mm. And so uh, in some ways I feel like, okay, God, I've done what you have required of me um, mm. in releasing this record. So um, I'm just prayerful and open to what he wants to then do with the music. So I do have some invitations for this fall, ministry events. A lot of what I do now more than traditional touring is women's conferences. Uh, oh, yeah. you, uh, sometimes it's a Friday, Saturday, two-day thing, um, just a variety. And I may also do some speaking along with the singing. And so mm -hmm. I'm just like this with the Lord. What, it, what do you want to do with this yeah. music? Um, doing interviews and things. Um, where, wherever he, however he leads, you know, and I, yeah. I sort of in my mind think, okay, this may be the last record I ever make, but never say never, <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> yeah. But it was it was seven years uh, since my last release, so it really was a long time coming. Oh wow! Um, so, yeah. and seven is a significant number in scripture, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, anyway, I'm just super super grateful um, to have been able to you know do this and then to have you all's help along uh, with me to, to that i didn't feel alone in this overwhelming task um so yeah. i made some new friends in the process <laughs> <laughs> yes uh so one last thing i want to ask you because uh, i think uh, a lot of people listening or watching will recognize your last name keggy mm -hmm. and they may go Ah, there's another Keggy out there, <laughs> Phil Keggy, That's right. That's right. Uh, who is to you know a lot of guitar players, musicians. He might be considered the best guitar player ever, and you know he's just not an a overstatement. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, yeah. So, tell us about your relation to Phil, and then also I would love to hear maybe a favorite moment you've had with Phil. Wow. So. So Phil is Uncle Phil to me. I, you know, I was yeah. married to Phil's nephew. So from age 18, Keggy became my married name, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, but we've remained close all of these years. And um, it was such a gift to be able to work with him on this record. Um, and, you know, in his home studio. And then we, we were at a couple other studios as well in the process. But uh, I just, you know appreciate so much his heart his humility his gift is so huge though he is small in stature his gift is great <laughs> and um yet he just offers it to the lord he's very generous with uh, his time and talent and uh it was just sweet to be with him to feel cared for in that way uh, by mm -hmm. him and uh we were able to we co-wrote a song that we um included on this record and of course he played all over it, but lots of other players as well. Um, and I just, I'm so grateful that, you know, I mean, he's, you know, he's slowing down. He's, he's, he's uh, prolific in the studio. He's doing a ton of studio recording and loves to do that. Loves to produce other artists and mentor other artists. Um, but pulling back from life on the road. And so I just feel yeah. grateful that we were able to work together for such a time as this. Um, yeah. cause who knows, you know, who knows what the future holds with that. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. What, what a fun, uh, and awesome, like <laughs> person to have in your corner and get to do that with for, for sure. decades. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, thank yeah, you and I'm trying that. to think, trying to think if you asked for a, a, a favorite moment with him and, um, oh trying to think of what that would be. I mean, you know, in the studio, even though a lot of the songs on this record are weightier themes, you mm -hmm. know, um, we we would have a lot of laughter too, because he's just hilarious, you know, he's very yeah. funny. <laughs> and so um, it was just always a, a joyful experience, you know, to go and work. And, um, you know, if there, you know, there was a couple occasions where, you know, there were tears or I got emotional, you know, in mm. the recording process. Um, and that uh, he was a safe place to fall, you know, 
yeah. in that way. And so anyway, he's just like a little yeah. mad scientist yeah. in the studio and, he, and he's <laughs> yeah. real playful. It's like it, you could see this childlike quality in him, you know, mm. that comes out. That's just delightful. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Well, Sherry, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the podcast. Yes. Uh, you are one of my bucket list guests, so <laughs> it's been awesome to get to yeah spend this time with you and introduce you to our listeners on the podcast. Yes. Um, so yeah, if you haven't checked out her new music and also anything else in the catalog <laughs> under Sherry Keggy, uh, it's yeah. all good. So yeah, check it yeah. out. Here's all these CDs. So Wisdom had this yes. idea, right? To uh, for me to like review all my CDs and do a little <laughs> reel on that. So that was a great idea, which I incorporated yeah. over on Instagram. And uh, so thank you for that, man. As I look at all those, I just go, God has been so faithful. You know, look yeah. at all of that. God has been so faithful. Mm. Thank you for um, stewarding your your platform as well. Yeah, and I think your legacy is really an inspiration, you know, mm -hmm. for other artists as well, and mm -hmm. and you you're remaining faithful too. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a a powerful testimony. So mm -hmm. uh, if yeah. you'd like to connect with Sherry, she can now be found on Instagram and <laughs> YouTube and Facebook <laughs> and any music platform uh, that you like to consume music through. So thanks again, and uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing what's next for you. Thank you, Wisdom. God bless you.